In 1972, the new Acoustic Dimension Company was founded, NAD. To celebrate, NAD released the C3050 Limited Edition with the looks of their earlier success, the C3030, but fitted with modern tech. In the car industry, this is done several times. Think Volkswagen New Beetle, Fiat 500 and the Mini. And while these cars are all considerably larger than their originals, the C3050 LE, which I will call the 3050 from here on, is smaller than its original. But let's first see how it is to be used. Of course it needs a pair of loudspeakers or a set of headphones. It also needs a connection to your network over either a network cable or Wi-Fi to stream music from the internet. That can be internet radio or streaming services like Spotify or, if you want full CD quality, Tidal, Kobus, Amazon and the like. If you have music stored on your computer or NAS and it's connected to your network, that can be played too. The 3050 comes with an infrared remote for primary functions, but the streaming functions are to be controlled using either a smartphone, tablet or computer. A USB drive Holding music can also be connected. If you still use a CD player, that can be connected over SPDIF, TOSLINK or ANALOG. Other ANALOG sources like a tuner can also be connected. To have the TV sound playing over the 3050, there is an HDMI eARC input so you can drastically improve your TV sound. eARC makes it possible to control the primary functions of the 3050 to be operated from the TV remote. There even is an input for turntable with moving magnet cartridge. So the 3050 can be the centre of a rather comprehensive stereo setup, although I expect most people will use it like this, with the internet and their own music as sources. But again, it does it all. The black anodized front and the real wood veneer on the top and sides really go back to when I started working in hi-fi in the 70s. Only the torque screws on the sides should have been plastic rings with Phillips screws. Or is that nitpicking? Anyway, the meshes are 435mm wide, 355mm deep and 110mm high. And it put 10 kilos on the scale. On the front left there is a standby button, probably for sentimental reasons labelled power with above it the status LED. The status LED is red during startup and green while operational. Below it the 6.3 mm headphone jack. The two VU meters are also eliminated red during startup and turn off white when operational. They can indicate the output power in 8 ohms or the input level. Below it the bass and treble controls. Then 5 buttons to select the input. Instead of the locking switches on the C3030, they are momentary switches, so that the input selection can also be done remotely. LEDs above the switches indicate what input is selected. A speaker selector lets you choose from speaker A or B or both, or switch your speakers for headphone use. The balance is set with this knob, while the large one obviously sets the volume. When Blue OS streaming is used, the 3050 switches to it automatically, which is indicated by this LED. The same goes for Bluetooth input and the Bluetooth LED. As with other Blue OS based devices, you can use Bluetooth as an input and at the same time listen over Bluetooth headphones or speakers. APTX HD Bluetooth is supported. On the rear we find a real power switch with below it the IEC mains inlet and fuse. Two pairs of loudspeakers can be connected and selected by the speaker selector on the front. The speaker terminals accept bare wire, spades and when caps are removed as on this photo, banana plugs. If you use one pair of speakers at a time, the impedance can be as low as 4 ohms, but if you want to use two pairs of speakers simultaneously, they need to be 8 ohms or higher. Then there is a subwoofer output at line level, so an active subwoofer is needed. Most of them are nowadays by the way. 
next to it the preamp output that is normally connected to the mains input next to it with two bridge connectors. A stereo line input, a ground terminal for turntables and phono inputs offer analog inputs. These are internally converted to digital so they can benefit from the direct room correction. Then the digital inputs, starting with SPDIF, then Toslink and the HDMI eARC input. The 3050 has a good NAD tradition, one MDC slot. Many modern NAD amps and receivers have one or more slots that accept these MDC modules that let you expand the possibilities. The 3050 limited edition is standard equipped with the MDC2 Blue OS module that adds not only blue sound functionality but also direct live room correction. It has two antenna sockets for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, a network connector and a USB-A connector for storage media holding music. Above it the limited edition plate. This is number 1 of 1972. Only 1972 will be built, 1972 being the year that NAD started. Another Bluetooth antenna socket is found here with next to it a USB-A connector for service purposes, an infrared sensor input for if you hide the 3050 behind doors, who wants to do that, and a trigger output to automatically switch on ancillary equipment. Finally there is a switch that lets you choose what the view meters show, input or output. After removing the cover we see on the right the switch mode power supply. Switch mode power supplies have a bad reputation but that is only partly right. My Grim Audio Mu1 has switch mode power supplies and is about the best sounding streamer I have ever heard, just saying. Poorly designed ones can be noisy but good ones don't and are able to deliver large currents fast. Talking about switch mode, here is the UCD power supply that works roughly the same way. You could name it a switch mode power amplifier, although it is normally called a class D amp. UCD modules were amongst the first class D amps that were considered to be hi-fi. And that was over a decade ago. A lot has been learned in the meantime. NAD uses the basic module and modifies it. If you look at the standard UCD 102 module, you see capacitors here where in the NAD version coils on ferrite cores are used while the outputs of the module pass through some extra components here. The preamplifier, both the analog and digital part, can be found here with the Texas Instruments PCM1863 analog to digital converter and two digital to analog converters here. The large one is the TI PCM5122, the small one the PCM5242. Both can handle 384 kHz 32 bits but no DSD. NAD and Blue Sound offer an app that can convert DSD to PCM though. I expect the first DAC to be used for the headphones output and the second with differential outputs to drive the UCD power amp. Then the imported numbers, to some anyway. The power amp delivers 2100 watts in 8 ohms and 180 watts in 4 ohms over the entire audio band. Then the MDC module. Here inserted halfway. A close up of the module shows the standard Blue OS circuit board mounted piggyback on the main board. It is the same board that is used in other Blue OS based devices like the PowerNode Edge I reviewed last week. That way the Blue OS apps always work the same. The classic amplifier functions can all be operated from the infrared remote control but from the app as well. The remote is a standard multifunction one that lets you control up to four devices, like for instance an NAD CD player. In the amp mode you can easily change from input using the numerical keys where one is the most left input on the front, which is phono, five is the HDMI input and six is Blue OS. Remarkably the play button works as play pause while the pause button is non-functional. Not a problem though if you get used to it. Blue OS lets you stream music from your computer or from internet services like internet radio using TuneIn, Sirius XM, Radio Paradise and others. Most popular streaming services are supported too as can be seen from this list. If you have Rune running 
the 3050 can also be used as Rune endpoint. In Rune just open setup and audio and select the 3050. The review sample I got was waiting for certification of the BlueOS module, hence the uncertified note. Since I have a developer's account, I could already try it out and it works flawlessly. I tested the 3050 in my reference setup 2 with the Acoustic Energy Radiance 1 loudspeakers, connected over Kimber 4PR loudspeaker cable. They are supported by the Rel T5 subwoofer connected to the sub out on the 3050. The connection to the network is over the Uptone Audio Ether Regen switch with Uptone Audio Ultra Caps 1.2 power supply. The Synology DS1819 Plus NAS was used as Samba share for Blue OS while the Intel NUC 10i7 FNH runs Rune Rock on a M.2 SSD and has the music stored on a terabyte Western Digital USB drive. The audio equipment is housed in the target rack while the NAS and the NUC are situated outside the studio. The 3050 was controlled over an infrared remote and an iPad Pro. After first listening sessions I connected the measurement equipment that came with the unit to the USB connector on the Blue OS module using the supplied interface box and used gaffer tape to stick it on a mic stand with boom. Then I started up direct live on my MacBook Pro and after a short while the 3050 was found. The rest is simply following the instructions on the screen, making a number of measurements, I think it's nine, and you'll end up with the screen showing the measurements. This is what I got. A large peak at about 110 Hz and a dip at 200 Hz. Then I applied the desired curve, this is the standard curve that comes with the software and had the filters calculated. That resulted in the thick pink line here. As can be seen both the peak and the dip are straightened out. The desired curve has a slight downward slope to the high frequencies, to many but not to all the most natural sounding curve. Since I had connected the subwoofer to the sub out on the 3050, Derek measures it separately. Here also a strong peak, this time at about 45 Hz. I applied the suggested desired curve and had the filter calculated. And also here the peak was evened out and leveled against the left and the right speakers. This all required no knowledge, just follow the instructions on the direct software step by step. The improvement is clearly audible, even in my studio that is already rather good sounding. Where the old C3030 had a somewhat warm sound in the mid-range and a less than powerful low end, the 3050 is the reverse. The mid-range is up front, sharply drawn and open, while the low end has a lot of authority. In the mid-70s a stereo image was not really an item in this class, so I can't remember how the old C3030 did. The 3050 has a very good stereo image with instruments in it placed well in focus. After direct live calibration it all opened up further. My studio at the third floor sounds rather well. The side walls are covered with my vinyl archive on one side and my DVD collection on the other, both forming a good mix of absorption and dispersion. The front and back walls from the floor up to one meter are from flexible panels that do some low absorption while empty boxes on the Vida also eat up some surplus lows. Still the direct live calibration opened up the sound further. The mid sounded cleaner and the lows had more authority. Without direct live I rate the 3050 halfway in my reference setup 2. With direct live it's three quarters up in my setup 2. Like with the premium retro cars I mentioned, the NED 3050 limited edition comes at a premium price, 2,499 euros including 21% VAT. And given the number produced, you have to run to get one. But no sweat, for later this year the non-limited version becomes available. It doesn't have the limited edition plate on the rear, has a top and sides of metal with wood print and no Blue OS module as standard. And it might not become a collector's item. 
While the price of this version has not been set, I'll expect it to be the same price minus the Blue OS module's price or cheaper. The Blue OS module costs 679 euros. Then about the digitizing of the analog signals as done in the 3050. Although in general keeping analog signals analog is a better strategy. In the amps like the 3050, both the ADC and the DAC run on the same clock, meaning that clock jitter, if present, is largely bent out since both the ADC and DAC get the same clock and thus the same errors. Therefore they will even out. The advantage is that as a digital signal, direct life can be used and that does a lot of good in almost all cases except for with true high-end equipment, say north or 50k a setup. In a setup with the 3050 it certainly cleans up the acoustic weaknesses of the room. All in all the 3050 is a product that stirs up the business and that is always fun, especially if it pleases the customer, which I think it will. And on that note I'll end the video. As usual there will be a next video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.